Hey guys, this is Heretic, and this is the Crown Event Guide for Saturday, December 4th, 2021. Before we get started, if you're a fan of War and Order and games like this, then you're in the right channel. So please remember to subscribe. Thank you. So the way this guide is going to work, I'll show footage from our crown event and explain the basics and our thought process for this particular event. The crown event occurs every week. The time changes each week and in this way people from different regions can all participate fully eventually, right? Um, this particular event began at 4 a.m. for me and for most of our alliance it began extremely early in the morning. The event has two phases. The first phase is the seize the crown phase. Your goal is outgaining, outpointing your opponent alliances by holding towers, which you get five points per minute, and the royal city in the center, which gives you 15 points per minute. The first phase lasts for three hours, and at the end of the first three hours, the alliance with the most points wins this phase of the event. There are eight total towers, which give a total of 900 points each over the three hours, and the Royal City gives 2,700 points if you hold it the full three hours. So you can do the math here, and using other alliances to help you hold a tower or two um, while you hold the center and a couple towers, you can win this, or you, you can divide it up. Either you could take the center and three towers and win it out, win it without any help, or if there's multiple alliances you know, participating in this, it kind of helps you out in the end. Um, in this event, your tiers, your technology, you know, your stats, rally size, all of those are extremely important. So you'll want to distribute your big players accordingly to ensure your best chance to win. So, you know, you may have people with you know, multiple people with very large rally sizes, and you'll want to divide them up between the tower and the royal city. In normal crown events, when a kill event is not occurring at the same time, you get back, I believe it's half of your troops that you lose. So for us in phase one, it began in the dead of the night, like I said, for most of us. And so we had to start off with a very small group of players. We quickly decided to regroup after an hour and then we said ah let's you know give it another hour for people to wake up and get online we take one tower but um, we we'll allow the other alliances to kind of fight for the center there was some drama here as the gnr and ozc alliances had a deal where gnr was supposed to allow ozc to take the crown and hold it and hold us off away from it well, of course, the GNR alliance broke this agreement at the start and killed many of the OZC players, and this ended up helping us a little bit, and we kind of worked out a deal with OZC as well. I, I, we would have won either way, but it just prevented both of our alliances from taking on more, um, more losses than, than we would have. Um, so in phase one, like I said, we just kind of decided to sit back and watch it to the end. So you'll see it, and I'm going to play some music over the phase one, speed it up a little bit, you know, as it is, as you're seeing now. And, and then in, at the beginning of phase two, I will come back. <laughs>
So now at the end of the first phase, the crown follows a, a yellow line from the royal city to the alliance fortress of the phase one winner. Um, phase two is the guard the crown phase. In this phase, initially, an alliance must guard the crown for five full hours. Each time the crown changes hands, as you'll see, the timer is, is reduced by 30 minutes. And at, I think after a few of them, it goes down to one hour. Uh, this is a really cool effect. And the whole crown event concept of capturing and then guarding is really fun. One thing that I, that I don't see in War and Order is kind of a crown rotation where alliances who don't really you know, fight, you know, more farming alliances get a chance at the crown. This is a war game. Definitely war in order. War is in the title. Um, so most alliances actually participate. Most of, the, especially the top alliances, all participate and, and have a, a good chance at winning, usually. So as I said, so in phase two, the winner of phase one initially has to guard the crown for five hours. Any other alliance can attack them and they can, if they win, if they're, you know, if they have more troops, if they have better tech or tears or whatever else, um, they're, and they're able to, to knock them off, like to win that battle, then the crown will then move from that alliance fort to the new alliances fort and you know the the timer will re be reduced by 30 minutes so it would go from five hours to four and a half hours so at this point we have enough people on and we feel confident enough in our tech and our tiers that we go ahead and do a speed hit so we plan it out in our alliance chat and we attack the GNR Alliance Fortress. It was a pretty big fight. I think we had 17 in the attack and they had a little over 30 in the attack. Um, they had you know, a few hundred thousand more troops, but our, our tech and our tiers, I think, won the day. And, and then the crown moved over to our Alliance Fortress to hold for four and a half hours. So I'm not going to bore you with, you know, even a sped up version of us sitting on a crown for four and a half hours. But I want to show one thing. Um, so at the very end of the fight, at the, at the end of the guard, the uh, crown phase, the alliance leader um, of the alliance that's guarding <laughs> becomes the king or queen. And at that point, they can actually transfer the crown to someone, which I do to LNCO. So congratulations, man, on the crown. I, I say king or queen, you're able to, to choose at that point. And another really cool thing here is you have, you, know, you have the king or the queen, and you also have someone they call the secretary. And the secretary is able to set who either give out packs and they can also set titles and you can set up title rotations as well which is really cool so people can apply for certain titles and then you can approve or not approve them so overall the crown event in war and order is extremely fun it, the way that it's divided up into phases makes it less boring um, than similar events the way that the time rotates each week and it's every week not every two weeks is really cool too because then you have more of a chance to you know have an event you know at nine ten o'clock in the morning which i think it is this next week for us um, so it, it makes it a lot more doable than having to wake up every single week at a certain time like 3 2 a.m whatever it is for you so overall great event and I hope you enjoyed. And, I, and I, if you do have any questions about the crown event, um, please ask. If you have any feedback, if you have anything maybe, you know, that you think we should do different or, you know, that you've seen, you know, as you've played the game, let me know. I'd be happy to give you credit for it. All right. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Hey.